In this video, I'm going to share with you the chest beginner secrets, how to get better at chest tight ticks, or am I? Right, let me show you this position. So this position comes from the common chest patterns, the isolated section on the skewers. And I got this message uh, come up yesterday and it's, it's from this guy and he says like, I'm sorry, bro, but this is, it's not beginners. It's too hard for me. And uh, I'm going to uh, archive the course. And I'm like, like, I really recommend you don't do that, right? Uh, I would highly recommend that you stick with it and that you, you drill these tactics over and over again because I'm a firm believer that, you know, you need to work on the tactics to, to improve at chess. And, you know, I've said, like, you know, stick with it. Please stick with it, it's, you know, because, I mean, from my point of view, you might say, well, who cares? You know, he's walked the course, whether he uses it or not. But I want people to use the course. I want people to, you know, get something out of it, you know, get a lot out of it as much as possible. So I would definitely recommend to keep working on it. Anyway, so looking at this position then, uh, it's a skew. We know it's going to be a skewer pattern, and it's I think it's plus position number 14. So you've already had some, some easier positions and some harder ones thrown in. But if you're looking at this as a beginner, uh, what you need to do with tight chest tactics is just get used to the patterns, right? So you just drill them over and over again. You get good at doing the patterns until they, they automatically spot out and sort of jump out at you when, when you work on them. So uh, if you want to pause the video, have a look at this position. It's white to play and when using a skewer in, in, in the sort of tactics. Right, so the correct idea is queen takes, right, which forces obviously the exchange of queens. And instead of taking at this point, and obviously leaving yourself a rook down, you then you take here with check, and then either if the queen moves, you just take the queen, the king moves, then you give the skewer, and then the, after the king moves away, you end up uh, exchanging into the winning uh, position, winning endgame. You know, you can push one of these pawns forward. So that, that was the solution. So if, you know, this might, for a beginner, might seem quite, you know, unusual if you've not seen this idea before, that that's perfectly fine. But what I would suggest, you know, is just to keep at it, keep drilling those ideas, and then, you, you know, these sort of things will pop up pretty, pretty easily uh, after a while. The other method to do that, before you get up to that level, is to you know look at the forcing checks and do it logically. It's a slower method of working on it, but until you get the patterns you know under your belt, then this is another method. So another method in this situation would be to count all the checks, count all the forcing moves, and well, we've got the, the initial one, the solution, but you know you could do it with a rook, or you could take the rooks off the board. So you know you've got basically you've got three moves in the position, right? So you just go through each move logically. So we've seen that solution. What happens if we take with the rook? Well, queen's forced to take. And then we're just a rook down, really. You know, if we, we can't take the queens off the board because you're a rook down, so that's not going to work. Uh, there are another so, other sort of forcing positions in the in the position. You know, your queen's under attack. You need to move your queen, and you can't take the queens off the board. So that's just not going to work. So that, that was this second idea. The other idea was to exchange rooks. Uh, leaving your pawn up in this end game position, but there's no skewer, and this is better for white, but it's potentially not easy to win because you know black could just get a lot of checks in. So that's not the correct solution either. So you're left then with the alternative, which is to take the queens off, take everything off the board, uh, you know, in this position, in this manner that like we've we've looked at. Let, let's do it this way this time. And yeah, so there you are. So so that was that was this thing. But the, the message I'm really trying to get across is, you know, there are no secrets to chess improvement, right? Chess improvement takes a lot of hard work, right? Especially if you're over 18. You know, if you're under, under 18, then, you know, you pick up chess a lot easier. Uh, if you're, you're in your 20s, that's not too bad. If you're in your 30s beyond, it's, it's really, 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 really difficult. And you have to keep at it. You have to keep working. It requires an almost PhD level of commitment to get better at chess. You're almost putting in 20, 25 hours plus a week for a number of years in order to go from zero to 1800 over the board. And, you know, I believe I can go to 1900. Uh, that, that's sort of possible with a lot more study. But obviously, if personally, I've, I've stopped playing chess to work on my novel, uh, uh, Lever in the Brown series. Uh, I couldn't, I knew that I couldn't keep both of those things going. I couldn't write a novel, or several novels, and keep my chess commitment going at the same time. Oh, apart from just keep my eye on me a few tactics, or you know, look over a few nice games and things like that. I couldn't train both my chess and, and write novels as well. So I had to sort of choose what I wanted to do in that area. But my overall message is: don't believe anybody if they tell you that you know there's there's a secret method 
or there's a way to improve dramatically. You know, like that man in the picture just lay back doing nothing requires a lot of hard work and commitment. And, you know, there's one more method that you could do to try and cut down on the tactics. And I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But, you know, my method is working on the tactics, getting better through tactics. And I believe, you know, that's the best way forward. You know, you can't really improve at chess without getting good at tactics. So, yeah, you know, you could go and do other things and look at openings and things like that. But essentially, you need to just work really hard if you want to get better, especially if you're older, right? So I would recommend that, it, you know, if you've got my courses and, you know, you're struggling or you've got any courses that, you know, or any books and you, you're finding them hard, just keep going at it, right? You, you need to put in a lot of work to get better at chess. You need to play regularly. You need to analyze your games. Then you need to study, you know, chess tactics. You need to have a repertoire. You need to know end games. You need to talk to the people uh, over a number of number of years to get better at chess. Do not believe this. You know, buy this course, you're going to get better next week. You know, lay on the set, you look at one position, and you get better. It's not going to happen. You need a lot of hard work and commitment. Okay, so uh, the only alternative to studying tactics, the other method that you could try if you don't want to study tactics and you hit, you don't want to put the hard work in. And you know you maybe not like tactics. I, I still recommend you down that route. But the other thing you could do is choose a very narrow opening repertoire, right? So you 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 play a system opening. You aim for sort of uh, dry positions in end games, and you know exchange off pieces and things like that, and get good at the end games. Get good, get better at the end games. Uh, but that method is fraught with quite a lot of danger because you might play a system opening, or you know what you think drawish openings, and you, you know, you can't really judge it. You know, you can play, play these, I've played like exchange French variations and been absolutely wild and crazy. They're supposed to be boring and dry and they've just been, been you know, erupted in sort of tactics. So you can't always work that way. I believe, you know, if you're running away from chess improvement, is chess the right thing for you? I don't know. Um, so that's just my message. Don't believe, you know, what people tell you that, you know, you can buy this, you can do this. And it's very, very easy to improve at chess. It's extremely, extremely difficult. It requires a lot of hard work and commitment. But, you know, I believe you should stick at it and keep going. All right. So thank you. That's my message today. Goodbye.